Use that one. Okay. Other one. All right. Oh boy. Um. Ooh. Whoa. Hearing your own voice. It's a lot. Um, the reason I, I wanted to do this show, um, because I, I've never done this before, I'm not, I don't consider myself a curator, um, but that's kind of what happened. Um, the biggest thing for me was getting people together that are making prolific amounts of work and nobody knows who they are. Uh, maybe they have an Instagram, maybe they don't. Um, maybe they're trying to maybe they're not even visiting like social media as like a platform to show their work but I think that the theme of all of this is just like people that mostly are self-taught but not everyone um, and getting them all together so I mean I don't know if I even explained that properly but um, I, I think it was needed um, I could say some other things that I probably won't right now. I'll save it for later. But uh, uh, I just think um, if you fall outside of a category of art that's like in style right now, I think it's a little bit more difficult to show in a gallery, have people pay attention to you, um, if that's even what you want. Um, you might have a body of work that spans like 40 years and people don't know who you are. And I think that's a shame. I mean, I think everyone here, like who's part of the show, is is like-minded on on some level, even if our work is very different. Um, I think there's there's a commonality somehow, and I haven't put my finger on what that is, but um, it was a joy to get everyone together. And somebody just broke Seb's painting. How much did that cost? <laughs> Welcome to Deep Dive. <laughs> Are you going to be okay, Sam? Okay, so that, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so just off of what uh, Gwen was saying. Let's. All right. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about people's pieces, actually. Yes. So, Leslie, please. Sure. Continue along with those lines. Okay, so my piece is uh, the piece it's in the corner over there. Uh, it's called uh, Some Titles from Henning's VHS Collection in No Particular Order. And so I, I was inspired by what was around me, which uh, was, or is, Henning's thousands of, thousands of VHS tapes in our tiny basement apartment. So the, the basement simulator, I was very excited to be part of the show and to, to uh, experience the, this basement. And so I thought I could bring a little bit of my basement into, into your lives. And, like yeah. No, it's good, yeah, because it's a, it's a portrait of Henning, and he's, he's an amazing person, so I wanted to just document um, him and somehow, in like the best way I know how, so. There he is, yeah, he's in the back wearing a I Love New York, handmade I Love New York shirt. Okay. He, and the reason why he has so many VHS tapes is because he's a, he's a video artist and works with uh, that material. It's your turn. Please, sure. is, that, is it banded? Or it's, is this, it's yeah. this, is, this is the order that it's happening in. Um, Here. You can abstain. Uh, uh, the work is the vomit pictures, people vomiting alcohol is half, oh, thank you, um, half like anti advertising and half, you're supposed to project upon it like uh, anything you're disgusted with. Uh, a philosophy that was 
put upon you when you were young, or anything that was ingrained in you that you're rejecting? What's the projecting? What's the projecting? Uh, projectile. Yeah, yeah, it's a pun. <laughs> like, I can't actually hear it because everything's sort of echoing on me. And I'm having a hard time convincing the, my uh, inner stand-up comedian that he's not supposed to grab the wheel. But uh, I don't really, I'm an underground cartoonist. Uh, that's why my stuff's on the wall there. Uh, that's, okay, does anybody have a question? <laughs> yes. Good. Please, take, let's take questions. Did you have a question over there for Geraldo? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which which art is yours? Sorry. Uh, I, I think they're over there, sort of. Uh, on one wall, and then facing them, and on both walls, there's stuffed up that's not mine, but is by people that I know and work with. Can you describe uh, your work? Actually, what medium that you? Work it's, in, it's, well, underground cartooning, uh, but I mean, like the underground comics that came out in the late 1960s. Oh, I read my first underground comic, which was Mother's Oats Comics Number 2. And I just smoked the hash, I went into the library, I lay down on this sort of imitation Persian rug, and I started reading and the rug started shimmering and I started going, oh my God, this is what I want to do with my life. And I've been an underground cartoonist ever since. <laughs> no, but I'm always uh, open to the uh, idea of reopening it someday <laughs> using modern technology. Yes. It, it was asked if the school is still open at the moment. And if, uh, they're still accepting applicants. if they're still accepting applicants. Uh, so, everyone on the panel, I love the, the free form of conversation, um, but there's only two mics that are actually working at this moment. So just uh, save your great thoughts and wonderful jokes for signal when you want the microphone. You feel hot at the moment. If you feel hot, just like put out your hand on someone will hand you a mic. Cool? Yeah. I'm All right. to tie into that. I started drawing out of spite. Get closer to the mic. I started drawing out of spite. <laughs> right. Um, I had a spare in high school when all my other friends were in art class, but I didn't want to sign up for art class. I didn't like art class. <laughs> but I just go there anyways, and I'm well, jealous of their drawings. They said, I want to draw too. I want to draw graffiti on, on trains in Selkirk, Manitoba. Why can't I? <laughs> so I started drawing these little doodles, squiggles, patterns. They almost look like tribal hente tattoo art. It looks really bad. <laughs> but I drew a heart for my grandmother and she loved it. She absolutely loved it. And then she died. <laughs> um, cash in. So I started drawing pictures of, uh, there's a death metal album there. There's Stone Cold Steve Austin, which now I regret drawing. Did you said you regret drawing? Yeah, or? well, I found out he beat up his wife. I was like, oh, no, yeah, worth nothing. Can't make any money. Anyway, I'm new to this game. In fact, I'm so new that I don't know what rules I'll be breaking as I do them, and I hope that I do. But I had a, a neat, I used to be a guitar player, and I needed an operation. And they took a bone out of my hand and ooh, and cut my tendon. And I knew this was coming, so I thought, you know, what am I going to do? I got to do something while this is healing. Take up art. I was about 55 at the time. <laughs> but I was always a doodler. And I didn't want to do what everyone else did. So, and I loved this guy named uh, Marshall Erisman. And I went on the uh, intertubes and I saw him doing this painting. And the way that he did it, it was just, oh my gosh, that is incredible. And I might be able to do something like that. But I didn't want to do exactly, so I, I, I went out and I got some equipment and I, I made some tools like for scraping and things like that. This was a question from the audience previously and someone that, that is working this, that can't ask this question. So I better ask it right. After bringing this, these works out of the basement, do you see, how do you see them fitting into the actual 
gallery world, do you, uh, anybody's opinion? Did, and you could also see it as, did you ever see these works of yours actually appearing in a gallery of some sort in your mind? Um, that phrase, just deep dive, plucked from the basement, just sticks out to many people's heads. So. To, to be seen is much more temporary and disposable in that sense. And, you know, when it comes to art, I don't really want it hanging up in a hotel or a hospital or my dead grandma's house or something like that. You know, like it's just, I, I it, art is subjective and it's supposed to draw emotion and you need to experience it within that moment, whether it is in a great gallery like this or on a wall that you're not supposed to paint on out in the street, you know, like, I think, I think, um, it's not, like, I would never have expected my art to be at this gallery, out of all galleries, uh, but, um, you know, my, I always thought that my art would be seen in a meme somewhere over Donald Trump's face, um, <laughs> but, uh, it's very flattering is what I'm trying to say. My non-existent children are going to benefit so much from all of the work that I painted uh, and kept in a garage to be eventually dust at some point. I'm super excited. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm going to be famous in some sort of book about what not to do. But I, yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from. <laughs> all right, this, this may be an unpopular question. Oh. Um internal um, brain bleeding when I was being born and I was, before I was on medication, I um, had uh, probably about, I don't know, 30 seizures in 31 days. Yeah, um, I've had probably 151 needles stuck in my body at once, but the, once I stood, like one day, uh, when I went to elementary school, I walked into class and, um, we started doing art and I started coloring and I actually, because before that point, I never had something to calm me down because I also have ADHD and my epilepsy combined also along with that storm. I have another part of my brain that um, influences a higher dose of the drug in our homo sapien evolution that uh, gets us angry, and um, I used to hurt a lot of people before I had a dopamine enhancer because of the fact that I couldn't control myself, and art was very much a therapy for where I wanted to be in life, and along with music, and um, Yes, and also, like, I saw a lot of the stuff similar to what you guys do is what I saw. I just see things on the street, and I, there's my inspiration. I'll see something random, like, say, just a Chinese dragon sitting, or a phoenix from the dark, from... Dark Phoenix or Harry Potter just sitting there and I take a bunch of things and I just do collages based on one topic a lot of the time. Do you want to like hang out and just like draw your shit? <laughs> I only have one question. Why is this kid not in this show? Yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> the next show, man. Yeah.
Okay. If you guys can pass, if you guys can pass this around if you want to. Brother, who was an artist in the truest sense, this guy, he could draw like a photograph, and that kept me away from doing it for so long because, you know, I draw a little piggly, squiggly thing, and this guy's drawing stuff that looks so real. It was amazing. Until I, you know, got older and understood that art isn't about perfection, art isn't about, it, it, it's beauty, it's what you find yeah. in it. And that, that could be a, a, a rose that is new, or it could be a rose that's dying, because beauty is what you find. And with music and all that stuff, man, whatever you like to do, go for it, because that's the way to um, becoming a true artist. And an artist doesn't have to be somebody sculpts and all that stuff. You could live your life as an artist, as a, a window washer if you want to. It, it truly is it's the approach of it. Art is who you are. It's perspective. Exactly. So, good for you, man. Last, last question, but uh, there's what Lucas was saying, and off of this question of, of, for lack of a better term, selling out. Know, um, but when creating your art, and seeing this, seeing other people's artwork up here, that's gonna be that, that Gwen has assembled basically in here. Is there anything that you've been influenced by at all? Uh, some, some surprises for a better, for lack of a better term? Um, and do you think about when you're creating art, I know that the, is it always just for yourselves or is it for someone like Lucas coming along and just feeling like those those lines that you've you've drawn or something that you painted may actually speak to them and get them through the day, actually. Um, I just want to hear from maybe one, maybe two of you at the most. And uh, and then Gwen, it's all yours. Lives dedicated to perfecting a craft. Um, to hopefully make some sort of living off of it, uh, there's that. But when it comes to art and expressing yourself, I think that's solely isolated for just you and you only, whoever interprets, interprets it in whatever way, whether they hate it or whether it's you jacking off onto a canvas, it doesn't matter, it's yours and yours alone, and it's disposable or it can be hanging up in a gallery forever next to a Monet or something like that. So that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, it's been a really wild and interesting hour. Has it been an hour? Okay. Um, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, lots to unpack there. I'm just going to um, see my parents out and have a cigarette. And I really appreciate it. Um, I think. The one thing that I took away from this experience um, is getting to know um, Raldo, for sure. Um, and getting everyone together, I think um, I learned so many things about people um, outside of their art practice, but just like the whole process was kind of amazing. Um, so I really appreciate all the artists that contributed the Graffiti Gallery for having me and everyone for attending this. Um, it meant a lot to me and yeah, I think it was a success. We had a really fun opening party and yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs> Give it up for Gwen, please. Give it up for Gwen.